most unbelievable and honestly the most scariest um, case of a convicted 40-year-old felon by the name of Kenyell Brown from Detroit, Michigan. Hi everyone, so welcome back to my channel. Um, today's true crime story could be something like out of a movie. If any movie producers were watching, they would probably be trying to figure out how they could create this into a story because it's really all of a, it's like a crazy story all by itself. Um, and the worst part about it is it's current events, basically like real life happening right now. So let's get into it. And I want you guys to tell me your thoughts because I just, honestly, I don't understand how this could even be happening. This is like the craziest thing I've probably heard so far. Um, once you hear the story, you'll understand why I think it's crazy. Um, I don't know. So I'm going to get started. Um, so this video is about um, the what I would like to say is probably the most unbelievable and honestly the most scariest um, case of a convicted 40-year-old felon by the name of Kenyell Brown from Detroit, Michigan. Um, Kenyell has a long, 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 long 20 year history of criminal activity, convictions, probation violations, anything illegal, um, you name it. And he's got it in his record. Um, but the strange part about this is that for some unknown reason, Kenyell was released from prison after serving a 15 month sentence for a gun charge and allowed to become an informant for the ATF, Alcohol and Tobacco and Firearm Agency with the Department of Justice. So Kenyell Brown was basically a free man roaming around Detroit, even though his criminal history dating back to the late 1990s is filled with plea deals, dismissals for several crimes, including homicide, all the way down to weapons charges. Now, let me just run down the list of charges that Kenyell has been convicted of um, or charged with. Number one, he was arrested for the first time in August of 1997 for carrying a concealed weapon and assault with a dangerous weapon. He served one year in the Wayne County Jail and was released in 1998. Number two, in March of 1999, he was arrested again for running from police and carrying a concealed weapon. The weapon charge was dismissed and he was sentenced to four years of probation for running from the police. Number three, in October of that same year, 1999, he was arrested again for possession of a taser and tried to sell a taser. He was later sentenced to four years of probation after pleading guilty to trying to sell the taser. Um, the possession of the weapon charge, dismissed. Number four, in February of 2001, he was arrested for delivery um, or manufacturing of narcotics, but again, those charges were dismissed. Now we're up to number five. In September of 2000, he was arrested following a police chase where a person ended up dying. He was charged with second degree homicide, two counts of running from police, driving without a license, causing death, driving and causing serious injury, carrying a concealed weapon, and two felony weapons charges. Guess what happened to Kenyell? The homicide charge in the police chase was dropped 
And he pleaded guilty in 2001 to two counts of fleeing the police. So basically nothing happened to him. Now we're up to number six. In February of 2001, he was arrested for delivery and manufacturing of narcotics. But again, those charges were also dismissed. Now, I just really want someone to explain why the heck was this man out of prison, let alone working as an informant for ATF. So on February 6th of this year, 2020, so just a few short weeks ago, police announced that Kenyell was wanted in connection with a double murder in River Rouge um, that occurred in January. According to police, two people, a 52-year-old 50, man and a 48-year-old were killed and a third person was critically injured in the shooting that took place on um, Beechwood Street in River Rouge. The critically injured person flagged police down and told them what happened. And the next day, police decided to, I guess they felt like they had no choice, decided to announce that Kenyo was wanted as a person of interest in the two shoot in, in the shootings. So now we're in the present day. All of his other past convictions, whatever. But now we're in the present day. Now they finally announce, hey. This crazy guy's out there, guys. Let's, we got to find him. So now on February 18th, a man was leaving for work um, one morning or that morning, and he saw a truck running outside of his home. It was parked and running. He didn't think anything of it. Maybe thought somebody left their car on while they went inside, whatever, went to work. Come home later in the afternoon. Car still running in the same spot. Okay, so now that's a little crazy. He decides to go and take a look at the truck and see what's going on and finds that there is a man shot in the passenger seat of the truck. Guess what happens? Again, police comes up making their announcement later that week saying, that Mr. Kenyell Brown was a suspect in the shooting death of that man in the truck on February 18. Now, police also made an announcement that they believe Kenyell shot another man inside of a um, t-shirt shop, shop called the Next Level Custom Tea Shop, which is located um, in the 16,000 block of East Mile in, on the east side of Detroit. Kenyell continued his crime spree and shot another victim over an argument about drugs, according to law enforcement. The 36-year-old man was found um, deceased in a vacant home located at the 20, 20th block of Minnesota Street in Detroit. Now, in total, we have now come to seven people that have been shot by Mr. Kenyell Brown. Six have lost their lives and um, one critically injured. In addition to those seven people being shot, Kenyell is also responsible for two carjackings. So over the last few weeks, a citywide manhunt in Detroit was has been underway for Kenyell. Um, after the police finally decided to admit to the Detroit public that Kenyell was a person of interest in the homicides spanning across multiple cities. So Kenyell was basically drugged out and on the run and out of his freaking mind and terrorizing the community all while being an ATF informant. <sighs> so Kenyell's um, crime spree finally, finally came to an end on Monday, February 25th. I'm sorry, February 24th, um, which is just this past Monday. 
when police spotted him in the backyard of a residence located in the 20,000 block of Ridgedale uh, Street in Oak Park, uh, Detroit area, which just so happened to be a few blocks, I think, west of the t-shirt shop where he shot, unfortunately shot and killed someone. Once he realized that the police were onto him and they found him, this fool decides to shoot himself in the head, but guess what? He lived. So he is currently in critical condition and I'm honestly trying to figure out why the police are keeping him alive, but I guess someone is demanding answers. So they are probably trying to, somebody's trying to figure out what's going on. Um, at a press conference on Wednesday, authorities said ATF transferred Kenyelle Brown to the Detroit Police Department and DA Joint Task Force as an informant as a condition of his release. He was under probation while being a federal informant, but failed drug tests, was arrested for drunk driving, and violated his probation multiple times. Again, I'm just like, how in the entire hill was Mr. Brown not in jail or prison for any length of time? It seems he has. It seems like every he's it, everything that's happened to him, he's either gotten probation or some little stupid short sentence of no more than two or three years. Not even three years. I don't even think he's had a sentence longer than two years. Um, Detroit police says Brown's background of violating his parole and um, all of his other criminal activity was never detailed to the task force or never disclosed to the task force. Now, I insert a major side eye at this point because I'm trying to understand, like, so because they didn't tell you, you don't try to, you don't do any sort of search on the person that you are taking on as an informant. I don't care who, I wonder if there's some sort of law or, or not law, but policy or requirement that the police would take this person on as an informant and then say, oh, we take him on without any questions. No question, no questions asked. We are, we're not even going to check his criminal background to see. That doesn't make sense to me because you would at least check his background to see like, okay, well, what did he do or used to do? Possibly to even see how he may be beneficial. I don't know. Um, I, I don't understand how that works. Maybe somebody in the comments can let me know if I'm missing something or I'm not understanding or if you have some familiarity with this type of situation. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this. I don't, I don't understand. I don't. I don't understand. Maybe I'm naive in my thinking. I don't know. But, you know, I hate thinking this way. But it sounds like the police were like, oh, uh, we're just going to let Kenyon wreak havoc on the Detroit community. Um, yeah, he'll be okay. We're, you know, we don't, we don't care what he's up to or what his past looks like because we don't care about this community. That's what it sounds like to me. It's, it's common knowledge that Detroit was ranked and probably still is ranked, um, one of the most dangerous cities in the United States. And, if this is how the police works there, I can honestly see why. If they don't care what type of people they have on the streets, you know, just in general, but they're actually putting crazies out there on the streets. I understand why Detroit is the way it is. Um, really, law enforcement has failed this community. These people, um, these poor victims, his current victims, his past victims, I mean, this guy could have potentially caused more people to lose their lives. What if Kenyo wouldn't have decided to, sounds like, let the drugs overtake him? What if he played it cool and just continued to harm people in secret, I guess, and, you know, never got caught? Like, I don't even understand. I don't understand how this could even happen. Um... 
comment down below what you think about this. Like, how do you think this situation even got to where it is? I mean, to be honest, who knows how many other crimes Kenyell is responsible for? These are all just the ones that are so blatant and, blatant, you know, violent that police have no choice but to call them out. Um, who knows what other crimes he's re he's responsible for or he's committed while being an informant. <laughs> he could have done so much more harm because they obviously didn't care at all about anything that he did. That's what it seems. I mean, the irony that the ATF is a law enforcement agency in the Department of Justice that protects communities um, or who are who's supposed to protect communities from violent criminals, criminal organizations, illegal use of firearms, um, use of explosives, arson, blah, 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 blah. But they had a criminal doing the exact thing things that they are supposed to protect the community from working in their own house. It doesn't, it, it was just like no boundaries. It just didn't, it doesn't make any sense. I don't understand it. How is it possible that they would allow Kenyell to be in an informant? It almost seems like he had some sort of maybe family connection in the judicial system. That's another thing that I considered. I don't know. So, you know, like, how many other crimes could Mr. Kenyell Brown be responsible for all while working as an ATF informant? Um, he could have done so much more harm because they obviously didn't care at all about anything he did. I mean, it's just, it's disgusting. Do you think that Kenyell Brown has been an informant since the 1990s and ATF and Detroit Police Department just don't want to tell the truth? I started thinking that perhaps that's why um, he was given so many chances and so many drop charges. Um, in addition to, it could be that he had some sort of family connections within the judicial system. Um, what do you all think? I mean, I'm really interested to know someone else's opinion on this one. I, my husband thinks that I'm naive and that it's the reality of the world that we live in, especially when it comes to certain things like, you know, like this type of situation where you would have an informant. They may have felt like the casualties didn't matter if he was an informant for, some sort of, you know, large drug um, crime operation or some large organized crime. Maybe he was feeding them information for, for some sort of large organized gun trade or something. I, I don't know. Um, it just really doesn't make any sense to me. And if this is the reality of law enforcement, it's it's a sad reality. It's just a really sad reality. I just wonder, like, is the plan to make known criminals, you know, your ally and then let them do whatever they want as long as they aren't causing you any visible problems for you or bringing attention to themselves? Um, let me know what you think in the comments, you know. Let me know what you think in the comments below about this. I mean, Detroit is a predominantly black city with a ton of issues. They have crime. They have crime. They have unemployment. They have, you know, their poverty rate there is or was at one point like 35%. I know for a fact that they have so many abandoned buildings because so many people lost their homes. So many people lost their jobs because jobs left. You know, it's the, like I said, the poverty is like in the 30% range, which is almost three times the national average. So do you think that this was done on purpose? Meaning like they did this, just let this idiot roam free because they didn't care and felt like nobody else would care. Guys, I will definitely be following this case because somebody should definitely be held responsible, in my opinion, for this mess because 
it seems like the whole damn department needs another overhaul. <laughs> Um, at any rate, I will definitely keep you all updated on this. I want to know if this time Mr. Kenyell Brown gets more than a, you know, 15 or 16 month sentence or, you know, a couple of years of probation. As always, you can check the description box below for links to articles on this story so you can get more details. I'm sure they're going to be up updating you know, news outlets frequently because this case is pretty outrageous. Um, but that's all I have for you today on this, guys. I thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, don't forget to do a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you are alerted when I post new videos. Guys, this, this, this one is just, in my opinion, too, too crazy to ignore. How, how did, you know, how, how, how did the police department or the community, how does law enforcement expect the community to care if they don't care? Remember, I'm just going to keep saying it. While we are pushing for people to respect and value our lives, we must respect and value ourselves because we deserve it. And I think one of the first steps is to demand accountability for things like this. So that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. Bye.